Delivering a video game that's consistently fun for tens or even hundreds of hours is a gargantuan task that the average player surely takes for granted. And that's because sometimes all it takes is one botched moment for things to fall apart, as all of the following games can attest to. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 exact moments video games self-destructed. Number 10, Tomb of the Legionnaires, Anthem. Now, I know it gets a lot of crap today, but Anthem wasn't completely dead on arrival. Sure, there wasn't much hope that it was going to be the next big thing, but it could have at least been an enjoyable game. The mechanics were solid, the world visually appealing, and there was hope that Bioware could at least deliver an interesting story to frame the Iron Man-esque flying and shooting. The realization that the game was going to be worse than we thought though, with none of the signature Bioware magic, memorable missions or story turns, came when the players hit the Tomb of the Legionnaires quest. This essentially served as a progression roadblock, forcing players into a string of brainless tasks, objectives, and missions in order for them to progress to the next part of the game. This mission was all the confirmation that players needed. Anthem was out of ideas and nothing more than a grindy, boring live service title. Number 9. Ridley Dies Off Screen, Metroid Other M. Metroid Other M is certainly far from a fan favorite entry into the series, with the prequel having been derided for its immature portrayal of Samus above all else, which felt inconsistent with her more assertive, established character. But even if you could tolerate the moment where Samus controversially freezes up in front of Ridley, for many fans their resolve was irreversibly destroyed later on in the game when Samus heads to the Bioweapon Research Center for a final showdown with the villain. Now the stickler comes when by the time Samus gets there, Ridley's already been killed by the Queen Metroid, leaving behind only the creature's decaying husk. Though players did get a fight earlier on in the game, they were nevertheless expecting a more decisive rematch, where they got to put the monster down for the count while avenging an apparently dead Anthony. But alas, the work got done for you and fans were not happy about it. Number 8. The Origami Killer Reveal – Heavy Rain Quantic Dream's Heavy Rain was a mostly entertaining murder mystery that, despite its uneven and unintentionally hilarious comical moments, at least invested players in deducing the identity of the savage origami killer. That was, however, until the late game twist revealed that the serial killer was none other than one of the game's several playable characters. In particular, private investigator Scott Shelby. Now, this wasn't merely a case of the game withholding information from the player. It straight up had them unknowingly controlling an unreliable character. Case in point, the player controls Shelby when the antique shop owner Manfred is murdered and the scene is staged to make it clear that Scott couldn't actually be the killer. But this obviously makes no sense at all, considering that Shelby did ultimately kill Manfred, leaving many pissed off that the game didn't play fair with them, manipulating their perception of events in order to basically make the killer's identity unguessable. It ensured that an otherwise enticing noir story flopped hard at the very end, in turn surmising the very worst of David Cage's instincts as a storyteller. But don't worry, that won't be the last time we'll hear from him on this list. Number 7. Virgil has a bigger dick, apparently. DMC Devil May Cry. 2013's Devil May Cry reboot remains relatively divisive with fans. For as fluidly fun as the gameplay is, the more juvenile tone struck a sour note with a lot of players. And if the early gag making fun of players who hated the new emo Dante wasn't enough, the scene where Virgil proudly boasts about the apparent size of his manhood surely did it. See, during the scene, Virgil and his twin brother Dante argue over which one of them is stronger, smarter, and better looking. And the squabbling seems to end as they head off to do battle with Mundus, but before the scene really finishes, Virgil lets out one final quip, and I've got the bigger dick. In a game which also features a demonic abortion administered via a sniper rifle bullet, yes, seriously. This woeful one-liner was the straw that broke the camel's back. The gameplay might have been great, but this was never going to convince fans that these characters were better than their original counterparts. Number 6. Hicks Returns from the Dead – Aliens Colonial Marines Aliens Colonial Marines remains one of the most disappointing video games of all time. And on top of its gameplay being painfully undercooked, it also made some egregious, ill-executed changes to the established law. Case in point, the game clumsily retcons the death of Corporal Hicks, who controversially died at the start of Alien 3 by revealing that he was actually jettisoned from the Salako and another Marine's body was mistaken for his. 
It's about as lazy an ass pull as any alien fan could imagine for resurrecting this great character, and was made even worse by both Michael Bean's thunderously phoned in voiceover performance and the character's dead eyed likeness. All in all, coming at the tail end of a game most alien fans already hated, it was the final insult. And while most, myself included, did loathe that Hicks died the way he did, this half-assed retcon, which was supposed to be canon at the time, came off as a desperate attempt to do something meaningful with an otherwise forgettable story. Number 5, Chapter 2, Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain On a pure gameplay level, Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain is a stone cold masterpiece. Even if many fans were left underwhelmed by its less cinematic storytelling approach, the scaled back voiceover work for Venom Snake slash Naked Boss, and the fact that the game was effectively released unfinished. Nevertheless, players were relieved to learn that they could unlock the proper ending by completing a post-game content. An ending which flipped everything players thought they knew on its damn head. Now, the final twist itself is contentious, that being that you'd actually been playing as a brainwashed big boss body double the whole time. But generally, the game itself self-destructs as soon as you hit chapter 2. And that's because this portion of the story was very clearly unfinished, with cinematics and story beats that lack cohesion with what came before, and missions that repeated objectives and locations from chapter 1 filling in the gaps. Don't get me wrong, MGS5 is still an amazing game, but its ambitions to act as the ultimate finale of the franchise self-destructed at chapter 2 start. Number 4. Incest out of nowhere, 12 minutes. It's fair to say that video games are still very much an evolving, maturing art form. And while games can theoretically tackle any subject with sufficiently deft writing, exploring incest requires an incredible amount of tact and delicacy, which 12 minutes definitely, definitely lacked. See, this time loop puzzle game decided to undo most of its goodwill with the interjection of a late stage shock value twist, where it's revealed that the central married couple are also unknowingly half siblings. To make even worse, the woman is pregnant with her husband's child because, hey, why the hell not at this point? Unsurprisingly, the big reveal proved hugely divisive amongst players, with some praising its boldness, but most feeling that it was tacked on out of nowhere and lacked the necessary nuance to do justice to such a taboo subject. And given that it comes right at the end of the game, this icky twist left a lot of players walking away with quite the flabbergasted, conflicted impression of the entire experience. Number 3, The Rubber Bullet Reveal, Yakuza 4 the Yakuza franchise may be centered around hard-boiled crime thriller storytelling, but the tone has always been somewhat heightened, making it clear that the developers are absolutely aware of how absurd and melodramatic it all is, even though it appears to take itself quite seriously. But there are limits to this, as was proven by Yakuza 4, and it's infamously deflating Rubber Bullet's twist. See, during the game, players witness an apparent massacre of a gang at a ramen shop, where seemingly 18 of the clan members are gunned down. But near the end of the game, it's actually revealed that the hitman unknowingly used weapons loaded with rubber bullets. And so he didn't in fact kill any of the 18 men, but merely incapacitated them. But then it turns out that they did really die as someone else who was scheming entered the ramen shop after the hitman left and did kill the men for real. Are you keeping up? Well, for starters, this is just insanely contrived from a pure storytelling perspective, but beyond that, it also undermates the character's entire emotional arc throughout the story, making him seem like an easily tricked idiot. And even for Yakuza's permissive standards, this was just a little bit too silly for its own good. Number 2, The Awkward Zombie Sex Fahrenheit Quantic dreams that David Cage has come under consistent fire for the depiction of sexuality in his games. That even when it's not problematic, it comes off as either immature or unintentionally hilarious. And that's never been truer than in his interactive drama game, Fahrenheit, where in the latter stages of the story, protagonist Lucas Kane actually dies, but is then resurrected as an impossibly powerful zombie-like version of himself. This leads to him inexplicably growing close to the cop who has been chasing him for the entire game, Carla Valencia and near the end of the story, the pair end up having outrageously awkward zombie sex. Now, beyond the fact that Carla falling head over heels in love with Lucas feels extremely rushed in and of itself, apparently due to developer time constraints forcing the story to be shortened, she's also basically committing necrophilia in this scene. Hell, the game even makes this point more apparent by having Carla comment on how cold Lucas's lips are when she kisses him. So yeah, you can't imagine that actually shagging him will be any more pleasant. 
But more than any of this, more than how weird the scene is, it's the visual fidelity of video games in 2005 that just wasn't good enough to make this look anything more than blocky human blobs bouncing up and down. It's the sort of cringeworthy nonsense that you'd be embarrassed for a family member to walk in on, and in tandem with the game's other storytelling problems ensured that the whole thing became impossible to take seriously. Number 1. The Fade Dragon Age Origins Dragon Age Origins is an absolutely fantastic, iconic game for many reasons. But the part that surely caused many players to rage quit and never return has to be the damn dirty fade. Now, midway through the game, players are forced to traverse this metaphysical realm, which amounts to a painfully overlong labyrinth-like dungeon that does nothing to forward the story, takes hours for first-time players to get through, and is presented in nauseating blur vision to boot. Play vitriol for this stamina-sapping slog of a level was so pronounced, in fact, that it didn't take long for modders to create a Skip the Fade mod, allowing players to bypass it entirely, while another mod simply removed the headache-inducing blur effects. Considering the Fade can easily take inexperienced players over three hours to get through, it's little surprise that f*** the Fade is a common catchphrase amongst Dragon Age fans. It is the epitome of pointless RPG bloat that brings the game grinding to a woeful halt. But hey, at least everything before and after this absolutely rules. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What did you think about these controversial moments in video games? And are there any other times where a title is just self-destructed right in front of you? Let me know, and while you're down there, if you could, please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.